Over, over, over. Welcome to Expedition good, Sea Nest. Good. Join us this week as we run now the obstacle way. course with the boat and get our anchor stuck in the rocks near Obstacle Island on Georgian Bay. On this side we have Obstacle Island and there are, it is a gamut of submerged rocks and and uh, zigzags that we have to make all the way through here. So I'm on the bow, keeping an eye out for rocks for Michael. It is a bit of a nail biter. just saw a mink swimming across and I can see a water snake. You can't see that from where you are. Obviously the GoPro won't pick it up. But this is an area that is full of all kinds of amazing wildlife. Still waiting to see a bear this year, but. We were just doing filming coming zigzagging in and we thought that was tight. Then we stopped filming and came around another corner. And I think this is even tighter still. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Over this way. Over, over, over. Good, good. Now this way. God, this is nuts. a hard right. Okay, perfect. Come this way. Good. Holy cow! And then there's a 
savage. That was crazy. New Anchorage. Michael is concerned with all these rocks. There is nowhere, there's no tree to tie up to for a stern anchor. So he's putting the dinghy anchor around a rock and then he's gonna tie that off and then just bring the rope back to the boat and then tie that rope here. Because if we use that rope and it rubs against the rocks, it'll fray the rope, which is an expensive rope. We'd rather not do that. So this is the plan B. Give it a whole pail. Here's the pail. And uh, actually, no, you know, I'll just give you this. Okay, you can turn the motor. Yeah, put it in neutral and turn the motor off. So did you just drop the anchor on the other side of that rock? You didn't tie it to anything, did you? Um, no, I just put the anchor on the other side of the rock, yeah. I don't want uh, the rope rubbing on the rock. Right. So you pull Actually, it tight. I think what I'm going to do is put it over Okay. Here. So you pull the um, anchor rope as tight as you can yeah. to get it out of the water. Is that the idea? Well, no, you just want tension on it because if the anchor comes loose, it could come out of there. But oh, it won't. It won't. It's jammed in there right now. Well, and we're protected by this whole ridge of rocks. Yeah, the in wind this today bay. is supposed to come from this direction here. In here today and tonight it's supposed to come from roughly in here so this is nice and protected this and i don't think it's going to be buggy because there's no marshy areas in here no, and the water it's, I think it's beautiful the water's still got a bit of a, a tan and stain to it, it though does. That's, well, it that's does because it we're still close to all these rivers yeah. but the fishing is going to be good oh boy <laughs> yeah. oh gosh I mean, as, as you viewers, you must get a little tired of us saying, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful, but it just is. It's all really beautiful. Is. It's just, just it's, it's magnificent. I mean, you have to remember that a lot of this was, was, was formed from glaciers. To imagine the massive strength mm. of glaciers, like miles of glaciers of ice sitting on top of this. I'm just plowing it. Just plowing through this, yeah. making these channels and that. And this is what's warm. And these trees that are seeking out this existence on a rock with no soil. It's unbelievable. Well, we've got a bunch that size, though. But like, put like a third. Whoa. Relax, dude. You will probably jump out of the pail. It's not too bad, eh? Fresh in here? Yeah. For dinner? Yeah. Well done. Against the rock cliff. Yeah. Passage. Not a big fish, but... It's interesting because you keep calling it. You keep calling these fish. You're like, uh, I think along this rock edge there's going to be one, and there was. And then you said in this grass fair area, yeah, and there were two there. And then you said, I'm just going to troll along this edge, and there was another one. So you're like five for five. Well, just a good. Doing very well. And you're doing what? Just straightening these hooks out. These, these are great hooks. Don't don't ever don't ever buy when you're buying, you know, lures for like fishing for bass and walleye. You don't want heavy duty hooks that won't bend. You want light duty, fine hooks that set very easy in the fish. You don't want. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the motor and let us drift here. Are we actually drifting down? I think we are. 
Yeah, the current is. You're not worried about this, are you? Way. No, I'm not worried. I'll okay. keep an eye on if we're going to hit a rock. But it's so dark here, it's hard to see the rocks. But mm -hmm. I think we're safe. Um, we are having egg mu McMuffins. Egg McMuffin? Well, there's no Mick, but... Just muffins. Egg muffins no, no, <laughs> didn't no sound Mick. quite as good. I'm sure it's going to be a lot better tasting than a McMuffin. Well, who knows? Yeah, I'm just looking at this. At what we're going to do today. So that really cool place where we went through... Um, where it was like a dog leg, it was really tight, even for our boat. It was called Parting Channel, which was right next to Obstacle Island. Man, the mosquitoes are heavy here. We're just a little east of Obstacle Island. Let's see if there's a name for this here. I can tell you guys. We are located uh, just by Dock Island. There's a little bay by Dock Island. So that's where we spent uh, yesterday. We got we got in pretty early here. We got in probably around uh, what time, Jewel? Ten. 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 I feel like ten it was ten around. in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're set up here. So we actually went over to Bustard Islands, which is directly south of us right now, and uh, and out they're more out in the open. Bustard Islands are beautiful. Yeah. You know they they've got they offer two different anchorages on the north end of the island. It's the the south end of the island's a little dicey. I mean, if you have a boat like this, you can get into some of those spots. You know, I definitely want something with a an outboard motor. You can slip into those spots. But there's there's great anchorages on the north end, and uh, and lots of deep water, um, safe for like you do. You can see there's a lot of big sailboats, a lot of big uh, motor cruisers in there, and uh, that's uh, and it's popular. There's probably Twenty boats, anyways, wasn't it between the two, the two anchorages? Yeah, it was. It was. It was pretty tight. Um, so it, it didn't really interest us, but we definitely will go back there um, next year. Where we are right now, small boat channel. There's some. There's some rivers running up. You know that probably connect to the French River, and that's a lot of tannin uh, water that flows out of here. So it's not as clear where we're sitting, um, but it's uh, it's quiet. I mean, we have the whole place to ourselves. I mean, it's not because it was raining, because it was, wasn't raining yesterday. It was a gorgeous day yesterday. And we said we saw one boat. That was it. Yeah, one uh, boat went by. One boat went by in the channel. the channel. No, in the channel. The yeah. channel's right out here. Yeah, yeah, the channel. I actually saw two, two fishing boats. Okay, two fishing yeah. boats went by the entire day. I mean, it was so quiet, you could hear your heartbeat. And uh, and we had this wonderful place. So we sat out in the deck, and we read, and enjoyed the day, went for a swim, and... Uh, really nice it was kind of nice having a place to yourself because you know once you get up into the north channel which is you know still part of Georgian Bay the north channel is uh, is you know it's busy it's busy so we're gonna probably stay just in the small boat channel just because it's it's very it's very attractive lots of beautiful spots you have to make sure you stay between the markers though because I mean it is treacherous as hell yeah, and it's it's raining today, so you can't see. There's no light. You can't see the rocks underwater. You know, and there's so many rocks on Georgian Bay that are just licking the surface. Not a safe place to cruise around. It's incredibly treacherous. There are so many rocks and so many reefs. Your charts can't even mark them all. There's that many of them. So it's important that you pay close attention when you're going into these places. And I would strongly recommend that you do most of your cruising on sunny days. Even though we're not going to do that today, we're going to, but we're going to stay in the small boat channel. So we're going to pay close attention, we're going to stay in the channel, and we should be fine. But uh, think about something else and you veer off just a little bit, 50 feet, and you're hitting a rock. You have to be really careful. 
some of this area is like going past Obstacle Island, the small craft. I do not recommend that for boats bigger than 35 feet. There is some really tight corners and going through parting channel, it was called. Parting channel really cannot be done with a really big boat. As a matter of fact, if you had a 35 foot boat, you probably wouldn't want to do that unless you could use your bow thruster. That's how tight it is. You may need a bow thruster to get around that corner. With our boat there, we didn't have too much trouble. You know, ours is only 25 feet. But uh, something bigger, and especially something with a 10-foot beam. Actually, we had friends go. I was there. just thinking that Norma and Doug, if you guys are watching this, uh, they were uh, from loopers. From They're loopers, loopers from yeah. Los Angeles. From Los Angeles, really yeah. great. We had a lot of fun with them. And and you know, Doug doesn't say no to anything. He says, ah, I can get through there. He says. That was tight. He says you're just about scraping the rocks when you're going and through there. Had, well, how long's his boat? 36, I think. <coughs> no, 36, 38, something like that. And he's got a. It's a white boat, and he says it was all he could do to get through there. So I wouldn't recommend a sailboat, especially a sailboat that doesn't have a bow thruster. I wouldn't recommend a uh, a, a power boat that's uh, a 10 foot beam that doesn't have bow thrusters. Yeah, it's really snug. So. Then, then you're better off just skipping this. Yeah. Do you agree? I agree, but he took it as a challenge. He oh, said, yeah. if they tell me not to go through there, I'm going to go through there just, yeah. just to prove them I could. Yeah. So, yeah. tells you something about a guy. Yeah. Cheers to you, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> so we toast the English muffins in the frying pan so that they're crispy. Mm -hmm. And then I put the cheese on. That's so pretty simple. It's, a, it's really raining out there right now. It's a dark, oh, dark day. Needs, it is a dark day. As a matter of fact, is this is. We've now been on Georgian Bay for almost a month now, and and this is only our second day of rain, or third day, third day, third day of we've rain. We had two days Three in days the rain. same location. Yeah. We What's we had two days. That's Mark? that's for no. It's hot chocolate on a rainy Ooh, day. Ooh, thank you. Chocolate. Am I lucky? Yeah, you're lucky because you get to go out and take the anchor. Yeah. That's okay. From the shore in the pouring rain. I think so. I might sold myself out before I go and do that. <laughs> so, our screen here. That we showed you. That we showed you. That it's now, we've been now using it for probably close to a month now. On a scale of one to ten, I give it about a three. It's falling well, apart. I think it did a good job. To be honest, it did a good job for what it was designed to do at the beginning, but its durability is terrible. So yeah. It's already falling apart. Yeah, like we had to tape it here in these spots just to hold it together. There's gaps in here. Like it's supposed to be overlapping, but this, so this one, I think we paid like 26 bucks for this, didn't we? Or something, yeah, something like, that. like that. So we bought it at, in, in Canada, there's this store called Canadian Tire. It's basically, it's like a Walmart, just prices are a little bit more maybe. Um, and uh, so the quality of this is, is, is very poor um, and uh, I wouldn't buy this one ever again but apparently we talked to some people that we met that we met and they said that you can buy a higher quality a thicker one and yeah. so that's probably what we're they gonna gave us it. a link so you'll see that we're gonna give that a try when we get home you need pepper and mm. um, and we'll let you know how it went go for the more expensive oh one. yeah yeah this is so it's it's not twice as much for the more expensive one. It's what, forty dollars or something like that. I didn't see the price. I don't know. Okay. So I think something around this was twenty-six. So well, in the end, you get what you pay for. Yeah, exactly. So that's the way she goes. So many times it goes like that. Cheers. Cheers. We're steaming up here. We're gonna have some breakfast. Yep. Julia McMuffins. Okay. We're stuck on some rocks with the anchor, so Michael's trying to get us to rotate the stern so that we can try to come around the rock in the rain. Otherwise, he's going to have to go down and dive for it. So we are spinning, but oh my god, this is good. It could be a real problem. Okay, we're getting back on the track. Yeah, that was. Uh I was jammed in those rocks. Oh, was, oh, you gotta go slow, go slow, go slow. Put in neutral again. I'm trying to get careful. back to this, yep, yep. I'm trying to get back to this track. Uh, you're okay now, it's just, Well, right. you don't know where there's a submerged rock. Well, this is it. Yeah. All right, put it in gear again. 
you got the motor trimmed up. You trim it down just a hair, just a hair. Mm -hmm. There, okay, now you're on the... Do you want to drive? Just if we're gonna hit a rock, I'd rather hit it with no power, with no forward, uh, with no engine running here. We're not, I'm not worried about the engine. It's now, the propeller is now actually in behind the hull. I just don't want to bump the hull. Now well, we're on our way. We, uh, we just got the anchor stuck. And, uh, and there lays the problem with thinking you're finding this fantastic spot, you know, where there's nobody else. And that might be one of the reasons, I don't know, but it's, you know, if you go to a popular anchorage, yeah, you're going to deal with a lot of boats, but at least you know, it's probably good holding and it's probably free of rocks that you can get stuck in most of the time. Um, here there's, you know, there's no one's, it's not known as an anchorage. So we dropped an anchor in there and we got our anchor jammed between two rocks. Now you what we see it because it's pitch black down there. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, you can't, can't see, see it. Bottom. No, but so it's, so what we did is I dropped slack in the chain again and I got Julia to put it in reverse and hold the, hold the motor over. So we slowly spun around. So it was pulling from the opposite direction that the anchor was set in. And, uh, and I made sure there was enough slack, so I didn't want to pull straight up with it. I wanted to pull on a steep angle, so I let lots of chain out. And once we got on a opposite direction, it was only at that time that I put weight to it. And then Julia put it more in reverse, and it popped out. And, uh, and we didn't have a problem there. So it's, some of those things can just happen, and you just got to know how to fix them. And uh, this one worked out well. You know, other times maybe I would have to dive on it. I would want to dive today. Pouring rain, dark. I'd need a flashlight down there today. That's how. That's how nasty it would have been. <laughs> yeah, cold. Cold. Nasty, dark. Yeah. Yikes. It's probably that big snapping turtle down there holding. Yes. Yeah, so we saw that was a beautiful anchorage. When we came in yesterday, we didn't film it, but there was a rather large snapping turtle. I might have gotten yeah. part of it that came close to the boat to check us out. And then shortly after that, not that they're in any way scary, quite beautiful actually, four little snapping turtles were sunning themselves on the rocks. Um, so it was actually a lovely anchorage. We, we have nicknamed it Turtle Bay because there were so many turtles, yeah. but um, not very sociable, but. Most of them were painted turtles. They're pretty. Yeah, they are pretty, on. but. It's like I, looking I, at someone's old grandfather. That's it. I went the big, you know. Uh, but I know, in my like mind, in my little imaginative mind, I'm like, if the water's dark and I can't see the bottom, I know all those little heebie-jeebies are down there. They're not going to attack me, but it kind of makes me, I don't know, makes me feel a little yeah, uneasy if yeah. I can't see them. You know them. what? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, we're, you know, it's not a big deal. I mean, we, we dove with hammerheads and I know. It sounds ridiculous that I'm concerned yeah. about a little turtle. Yeah, but anyways. And the snapping turtles aren't aggressive. No, they're not. Unless you grab them. I mean, unless you actually physically grab those turtles, they're always going to find a way to get away from you. Yeah. But if yeah. you do grab them, you could lose a finger. They'll, you could, yeah. They'll whiplash. Their necks their... are longer than you think. I actually once grabbed the turtle by the back of the shell. To move it off the road. To move it off the road. And yeah. its neck came out. And its neck was like a foot long. And it came out and, and almost got my fingers. Never again will I do that with my bare hands. Yeah, there's a safe way to, to rescue a snapping yeah. turtle off of the road. And usually it's uh, put something underneath it like a shovel and then push it. Or I have seen, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, is to get them to grab onto a stick mm. and then pull them to the side if you don't have a shovel. But anyways, you probably never have that situation. But if you do, don't pick them up. So there's a lot of um, condensation on the bow here. And I know there's a lot of other people that know these things, but I'm just showing you what we have, this little fan that plugs into a USB beside the uh, helm. And then we aim that at the bow, at the um, windshield. And it moves, the moves the air and clears things up because it's raining so hard, you don't want the windows open.
Thanks for watching.